The road stretched out before me, a seemingly endless ribbon of asphalt cutting through the Nevada desert. It was just after midnight, and the glow of the Las Vegas Strip had long faded into the rearview mirror. The darkness out here was thick, almost oppressive, with only the occasional flicker of headlights from a distant car breaking through the inky blackness. I was hauling a load of freight to Los Angeles, the same route I'd driven a hundred times before. I'd always found a strange comfort in the solitude of the open road, the steady hum of the engine beneath me, and the rhythm of the tires against the pavement. But that night, something felt different. The air was heavy with an unspoken tension, and I couldn't shake the feeling that I wasn't alone. As I rounded a bend in the road, my headlights caught a glimpse of something up ahead. A figure was standing on the shoulder, just beyond the reach of the dim yellow light. My first thought was that it was some poor soul whose car had broken down, stranded out in the middle of nowhere. But as I got closer, I realized it was a woman, thin, with long, dark hair that hung like a veil over her face. She was dressed in a simple white dress, the kind you might see at a summer wedding, but it looked out of place out here in the desert. I slowed the truck as I approached, my instincts telling me to keep going, but the good Samaritan in me couldn't leave her out there alone. I pulled to a stop a few feet ahead of her and rolled down the window. You need a ride? I called out. She didn't respond right away, just stood there in the glow of the headlights, her head tilted slightly as if she were listening to something I couldn't hear. Finally, she nodded and walked toward the passenger side of the cab. There was something unsettling about the way she moved, slow, deliberate, almost as if she were floating just above the ground. I unlocked the door, and she climbed in without a word. The cab was suddenly filled with a strange, musty odor, like old, damp earth. I glanced at her, but she kept her head down, her hair still obscuring her face. I cleared my throat, trying to dispel the unease that had settled in my chest. Where you headed? I asked, trying to make conversation. Truck stop, she murmured, her voice barely above a whisper. There was something off about her tone, something distant, as if she were speaking from far away. But I didn't press. I just nodded and put the truck back in gear, pulling back onto the highway. The road was empty, just a straight shot through the desert, with no signs of life for miles. The only sound was the drone of the engine and the occasional crackle of static from the radio. As we drove, I couldn't shake the feeling that something was wrong. The woman didn't move, didn't say anything else, just stared straight ahead, her hands folded in her lap. The longer she sat there, the colder the cab seemed to get, until I could see my breath in the air. I reached over to turn up the heat, but the dial was already maxed out. My hand was shaking as I pulled it back. I tried to ignore the chill, focusing on the road ahead, but the unease was growing stronger by the minute. Every so often, I'd glance over at her, hoping she'd say something, give me some kind of clue as to who she was or where she was really going. But she remained silent, her face hidden in shadow. After what felt like an eternity, the lights of a truck stop appeared on the horizon. I exhaled a breath I hadn't realized I was holding. I pulled into the lot, parking under the harsh fluorescent lights that flickered overhead. The place was nearly empty, just a few trucks parked in the far corner, their drivers likely asleep in their cabs. We're here, I said, my voice sounding too loud in the stillness. She didn't move. Hey, I said, a little more forcefully. We're at the truck stop. You okay? Slowly, she turned to face me, and for the first time, I saw her eyes, empty, black voids that seemed to swallow the light. My heart skipped a beat, a cold sweat breaking out on the back of my neck. Her lips moved, but no sound came out. I was frozen, unable to look away from those soulless eyes. Then, without warning, she reached out and grabbed my hand, her grip icy and impossibly strong. A wave of dread washed over me, and I felt an overwhelming urge to flee, but I couldn't move, couldn't breathe. You shouldn't have stopped, she whispered, her voice barely audible but filled with an ancient, bone-chilling malice. My heart pounded in my chest as her grip tightened, and I felt a sharp, 
burning pain in my hand, as if her touch were searing my flesh. I tried to pull away, but she held on, her eyes locking onto mine with an intensity that made my blood run cold. Then, just as suddenly as it started, it was over. She let go, and I jerked my hand back, cradling it to my chest. When I looked up, the passenger seat was empty. The door was closed, and the woman was gone, as if she had never been there at all. I sat there for a moment, my mind racing, trying to make sense of what had just happened. My hand throbbed where she had touched me, and when I looked down, I saw the skin was red and raw, as if it had been burned. I opened the door and stumbled out of the cab, desperate for air, for light, for anything that would remind me I was still alive. The night was eerily silent, the desert wind whipping through the parking lot. I glanced around, half expecting to see her standing there, watching me. But there was nothing, just the empty lot and the distant hum of the highway. Shaken, I made my way into the truck stop. The fluorescent lights inside were harsh and blinding, but I welcomed them. I walked straight to the counter, where a tired-looking cashier was flipping through a magazine. You all right, buddy? he asked, glancing up at me. I nodded, though I knew I looked anything but all right. There was a woman. I picked her up a few miles back. She said she needed to get to the truck stop. You seen her? The cashier frowned, glancing toward the door. A woman? I haven't seen anyone come in. She was right beside me, I insisted, my voice shaking. She just, vanished. The cashier's expression shifted, a flicker of recognition in his eyes. You on I-15? Yeah, I replied, confused. He sighed, shaking his head slowly. You're not the first, you know. There's been stories for years about a hitchhiker on that stretch. Folks pick her up, and then she just disappears before they reach the truck stop. Some say she's the ghost of a woman who died out there, long time ago. Car crash or something. They never found her body. My stomach dropped, the reality of what I had experienced sinking in. So, she was. Dead, he finished for me. Yeah, probably. You're lucky she let you go. I stared at him, the weight of his words settling over me like a shroud. The coldness in the cab, the empty eyes, the searing pain in my hand, it all made sense now in a way I wished it didn't. I didn't sleep that night. I couldn't. I sat in the truck, staring out into the darkness, replaying the encounter over and over in my mind. The burn on my hand was a constant reminder that it wasn't just a nightmare, it was real. And I knew, deep down, that I would never drive that stretch of I-15 again. The road might have been lonely before, but now I knew it was something far worse. It was haunted, and not by just any ghost, but by something malevolent, something that still lingered in the shadows, waiting for the next unlucky soul to come along. And the next time, I might not be so fortunate.